Labor backbenchers want greater regulation on media reporting ahead of Queensland election. So the Labor government here in Australia is a leftist government. They've been in charge of the state of Queensland for about uh, 10 years now, since 2015, so give or take 10 years. Their leader for the majority of it, Anastasia Palaszczuk, abruptly resigned not so long ago, stating that, you know, she had done her thing. There's nothing more that she could do, but if you would ask me, it was because of her authoritarian edicts during the whole COVID-19 pandemic. It was taken over by a guy called Stephen Miles. Is that his name? Yeah, I think that's his name. Things aren't going great in Queensland at the moment. Labor backbenchers are pushing the Miles government to investigate restricting the media's reporting on Queensland's youth crime crisis ahead of the October state election. This is one of the big problems in Queensland. Youth crime has spiked dramatically. There are many reasons for it. One of them being the cost of living problem. The other being that these leftist governments don't prosecute offenders. They just give them a slap on the wrist. Oh, naughty boys and girls. Draft recommendations put forward by Labor MPs on a powerful parliamentary committee tackling spiralling juvenile crime suggests greater regulation on media reporting. The committee was disbanded on Wednesday night after its independent chair, Sandy Bolton, told the parliament her position had become untenable, with Labor and LNP MPs deadlocked over its interim report to government. Uh, the LNP is the Liberal National Party, the supposed conservative party here in Australia, which they are not. They are just a pack of cowards who are just basically leftists doing the speed limit. If they are a real conservative government, they might actually start winning. But no, can't have that. A draft version of the report seen by the Australian recommends the state government look into the impact of media and social media reporting of crime and any impacts it may have on encouraging offenders, reducing community safety and perceptions of safety and any impacts on the delivery of victim support. Sure, that's exactly why they want this, I'm sure. Some members consider the greater regulation of traditional news media could assist in preventing the glorification of young offenders, which can encourage their peers to offend, the draft report read. Now, that's, that, that, that is a hard one because especially in the United States, when they cover things such as mass deletion events, they, they splash the photo all over the news, they say his name, they put up a counter and all that sort of stuff, and that is a problem. So there needs to be a little bit of debate and know exactly what they mean by this, but I don't believe this for a second. This is not what they really want it for. Excuse me. The push follows a failed attempt by the state Labor government to pass media gag legislation ahead of the 2020 state election. Former Premier Anastasia Palaszczuk C***ed. ultimately backflipped on plans to restrict journalists reporting corruption complaints after widespread criticism of the surprise legislation from media groups, lawyers and civil libertarians. Crime is a major political problem for Labor, with the number of hardcore recidivist teenage criminals growing in recent years, which is what I was just saying, that they don't punish them. In last month's news poll, crime was ranked as the second vote-deciding issue in Queensland after the cost of living. See, these two things, they basically contribute to it. The Youth Crime Committee was dissolved after a fiery debate on Wednesday night with Labor and LNP MPs blaming each other for using the bipartisan process to advance their own political agendas. The LNP's Laura Gerber, a former federal prosecutor, said she could not support the interim report because of recommendations that would regulate media reporting on youth crime. The LNP would not could not put their names to a report that was going to gag the media, she said. They want to control the recommendations, they want to control the narrative, and guess what? They want to control the media too. I don't disagree with that. It is an absolute disgrace to politicise this now and say that it was not a bipartisan committee. 
Labor's Jonty Bush, a former Queensland Homicide Victim Support Group chief executive, accused the LNP of blocking the report's release. While I do not agree with all the recommendations in the report, it is important that findings from the committee are made, that they are published and that they are placed into the public domain for Queenslanders to examine and debate, she said. I have regrettably come to the conclusion that this committee is no longer serving the interest of Queenslanders. It is no longer a vehicle for bipartisanship. It has been hijacked by the LNP's political agenda. The full interim report is due to be released on Thursday. Look, here's the thing. I don't believe this shit for a second. This is purely just the way for the leftist governments here in Australia to control the narrative. I happen to agree with that LNP politician. We know this. We know this because our Prime Minister is trying to push a mis- and disinformation bill, which would target media outlets for publishing news that the Labor governments here in Australia, not just on the state level, but the federal level, do not like. How do I know this? Well, because we had an incident here in Sydney, Australia, just a few nights ago on Monday night, where an Islamist ran up to a priest and tried to kill him for insulting his prophet. That Islamist was a 15 or 16 year old boy. And then we got this message from Julie Inman Grant, who is Australia's e safety commissioner reporting directly to Anthony Albanese. And what is her job? Her job is to contact places like X and tell them, take down posts that we don't like. The attacks at the Fairfield Church yesterday. What are the consequences following up? Well, we have a range of um, graduated powers. Um, there could be civil proceedings and we could take them to court or we could fine them. Of course, the quantum of the fine would depend on the gravity of the noncompliance, but we can use graduated tools like linked to leash and notices. So if they fail to remove the content, then we can go to the search engines such as Google or Bing to really minimize the amount of content the Australians can see. Now, let me just uh, put this into context for you. What she's saying there is because when the attack happened, number one, it was actually live streamed on the victim's YouTube channel because he's very popular. Um, and it immediately spread like wildfire all over X. This person, Julian Grant, the e-safety commissioner, does not like that. Now, why was it important for everyone to see it? So we could see that it actually happened because if this government gets its way, that information would have been scrubbed as quickly as possible. And anyone who questioned the event, well, they could just slap the title of racist or Islamophobic or whatever you want to call it. That is what her job is. And she's saying that she's going to start fining these corporations. And here's the thing, once they do the fining of the corporation, then she's going to move on to people like me, you know, who, who's who got less, collectively less than uh, how many followers all up on all my platforms, less than 5,000 people following on all the platforms that I've got here, which you can see, uh, you know, up there, up there, up there, up there. God, I've got to get this right. There we go. Up there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know what I mean. Follow me, by the way. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, um, then they're going to start coming after people like me because I'm going to be reporting these things to you and the e-safety commissioner is not going to like it. Now, how do I know that? Well, I know that because I did a video about this. Hang on, I'll, I'll see if I can find it for you. Where is it? I'll just go to my YouTube channel. I did a report on this about how Julie Inman Grant... Uh, how long ago? Here it was. This one right here, three weeks ago. Okay. Julie Inman Grant is basically removing posts from people, not just here in Australia. No, she targeted 
a Canadian citizen, just a citizen, because he insulted one of her friends. And who is this person, by the way? Well, she is a disgruntled ex Twitter employee, yeah, she's part of Twitter 1.0. You know, the, the Twitter that would censor everyone and then Elon came and freed the bird. Well, she's very upset about that. She's also uh, very lovey-dovey with the WEF. To really minimize the amount of content the Australians can see. Did you hear that? Shit, I'm going to play that again. The amount of content the Australians can see to really minimize the amount of content the Australians can see. She is going to be your net nanny. She is going to decide what you can see. Not you. No, no, no. She thinks you're too much of an idiot to control your internet experience. She wants to control it for you. And how much time do they have to remove this? Uh, this um. We expect them to remove this expeditiously within the next 24 hours. We know that every minute counts. Um, and the more, more this content is up there, the more that is reshared, the more the velocity and the virality continues. And we need to stem that. You do have powers to remove this content if it's not um, actioned on by these companies. Are you prepared to use those powers if they don't come to the table? Um, we've already just issued a notice to X Corp to use these uh, formal removal powers. We will be issuing notices to Meta today. All right. Where to from here, Australia? Are you going to allow this to happen? Can you not see it clear as day now that these leftist government want control over every single aspect of your life? When you're sitting there telling people on your Facebook page or your ex, hey, youth crime is going out of control here. It's going to be taken down by that person because you had a thought crime. Yeah, look, like I said right at the beginning of this video, the Liberal Party, the supposed Conservative Party, they're not much better, even though I agreed with one of them uh, in that report that I was reading. But the majority of them are all spineless cowards. So I implore you, like I have in many of my videos, to look to who you're voting for. Look to those who are actually going to stamp this stuff out. The problem is, if you're watching me right now, you already get it. The problem is that the majority of Australians, for some God knows reason, want to have every aspect of their life controlled. They don't want to take the personal responsibility for their own lives. Mummy and daddy government should take care of it for me. That is the attitude. So if you know those people, I guess try talking to them. Maybe send them my video. Who knows? Because otherwise this is gonna get this is gonna get crazy. Bad things are gonna happen and you're gonna be looking to the news. Where is it? Where is it? Well, we can't have that because it goes against. The narrative. All right, mate. Thanks very much for checking out the channel and this video. Follow me up there. I got it right that time. And do all the things down there. Uh, please do subscribe. Are we done? Yeah, we're done.